In the last lesson, we explored your home note, specifically the Atlas and Calendar headspaces. We saw how powerfully we could context switch between a knowledge first mindset and a time-based mindset. But what about when we want to act? How can we handle getting things done when it comes to working with ideas? That's what the efforts space solves, and that's the focus of today's lesson. First, I'll cover how to use efforts. Then if you're interested, I'll give an overview of where and why projects fail while efforts succeed. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. We're back in the home note, and we've looked at Atlas and Calendar. It's time to twirl down efforts. So here we go. What can you work on for a concentrated view go to this note called efforts. We're about to jump into there as well, but I want you to see at a glance what we're about to get into. Efforts that are turned on, efforts that are ongoing, and even simmering efforts. Now the folder of ACE, the ACE headspace again comes to the rescue because it unifies what we see in a single note and what we see in folders. In this case, you can see we have the same notation system here on ongoing simmering you'll also see sleeping but can you understand why we might want to leave sleeping off of our home note it just doesn't need to be there right all right this is great now with that in mind let's hop into efforts keep your priorities in order quickly adjust your bandwidth as needed let me go ahead right click here and pin this note that way if i click on something else i'll be confident that this note is still right where it needs to be as we scroll through you'll notice on, ongoing, and simmering. And again, sleeping is over here in the folders where it belongs. If you keep scrolling though, you'll see that I've included a lot of different notes in Ideaverse for Obsidian, and that will really help you understand what efforts are all about. But how about let's jump into one. With that in mind, let's open the big differences between efforts and projects. I'm going to click on it here and just drag it into a new pane. Isn't that kind of cool? All right, so with that in mind, let's get the definitions right, okay? You're probably wondering if we can address the elephant in the room. Projects, efforts, why efforts? Well, let's start with definitions first, okay? A project is a sequence of tasks that must be completed within a defined timeline to attain a certain outcome. There's a lot of clarity, there's a lot of certainty, there are a lot of clearly defined steps. An effort is an exertion of energy to do something where the steps, deadlines, and outcomes may or may not be clearly defined. So you can see at the start that efforts are a little bit looser, and you'll see later how this looseness allows us to play better with our own ideas. Projects are rigid and narrowly defined. That means they're coming from the top down, this kind of way to order or architect information. And that's great, we need that, but we also need something else. We need something that allows us to think from the bottom up, a little bit more chaotic, a little bit more connected, even a little bit more fluid. And that's where efforts come into play. So just at the highest level, you can read this on your own time, efforts do not force a top-down mindset. Efforts don't need a deadline. Efforts don't have a clear size. And then you'll notice at the bottom of this note is a link to how ideas and efforts play nicely together. And if we look back over at the efforts note, you'll notice that that is one of the notes that I have to allow us to learn more about what efforts are and how they behave. So let's go ahead and click on how ideas and efforts play nicely together. Now we don't have the time to go over this together, but when you download Ideaverse for Obsidian, you can go through this on your own time and you'll start to really feel how ideas need a looser format, a looser mindset that allow us to move between structural things and more uh, chaotic things. We might call that architect versus gardener. And we don't need to do one or the other. We need to be able to move between one or the other. And that is what's going to allow our efforts to be what they need to be fluid, adaptable, evolving, and eventually with an outcome. But even this example might not be enough for you to really recognize why efforts work the way they do. So if you go to the related section, you'll see why efforts are liberating. You can click on that and read even more there. But what I want to really show you today is how you can use efforts today. So let's go to the four intensities of efforts. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the effort note and click right here on the four intensities of efforts and nicely it opened up in this right hand pane. Now we can finally get into it. These are the four levels of efforts. I like to think of them as the four intensities of efforts. 
a system for allocating your energy. Okay, are you ready? Now, over here on the folders, we can see we have a notes folder on ongoing simmering sleeping. What does that all mean? What is that all about? Over here, we can explain that a little bit. Your on efforts, the efforts that you turn on, they're for your most active efforts and projects. So if you think from a project mindset, you'll find that projects will be in the on effort folder. We also have ongoing. That's for broader ongoing efforts. Makes sense, right? Then after ongoing, we have simmering. These are for efforts that you put on the back burner, basically on the back of your mind. They're still working in the background though, but just not in this active turned on sort of way. And then last we have sleeping efforts. This is for everything else, random efforts, efforts that are done, that are completed, that are in cold storage, or that just need to be out of the way until maybe next year or a future time. Who knows? Now, before I talk about the intensities of these efforts and how they work, I just want to point your eyes towards the notes folder. So if we twirl down calendar and Atlas, you'll notice that each of these core headspaces have their own notes folder. Why is that? Is that confusing or is that helpful? Here's how I'd like to explain it. Action-oriented effort notes go here. And you can see I have a couple actions that require their own folders. In this case, a course I teach at UCLA and my weekly newsletters. Those are the examples in the Ideaverse for Obsidian. But what about calendar? Time-oriented calendar notes simply go here. And then knowledge and idea-oriented atlas notes simply go here. Boom, that's it. Okay, now let's talk about how these efforts are working again with the intensities. When you start viewing your efforts through the four lenses of intensities, it will allow you to very quickly see a truer estimation of your current efforts, effectively prioritize your efforts at a glance, and then be able to quickly adjust your bandwidth as needed. So let's twirl these down. This is in the folder system, but the beautiful thing is you can see the same view as these folders over here in your home note. So just as a reminder, I might start the day and think, okay, I feel like I have a lot going on. What's really going on? How can I budget my time? Then I'll twirl down efforts and then I'll start looking around. And here's a really great example. We're just about to wrap up the UCLA course. So I'm just going to hover over that a little pop-up happens and I'm going to change the rank. It's been at a five and it's kind of gone down to a four. There's still some things I need to do to close the class, but now it's down to a three. And everything with Ideaverse, it's still a five. Really, it feels like a five and a half. And then we're about to gear up for the big workshop, workshop 12. So that's definitely a five as well. Now, let's just imagine for a moment that I'm kind of going through all this. I twirl down Simmering, and I'm thinking about the podcast. I wanna show you something. This is why efforts in the A system comes alive so well. In the folders, I can just take podcast here, I want, I want us to see this. Let me go ahead and collapse ongoing. And I'm just going to move it. So over here, podcast, I'm going to move it to be a turned on effort. Boom. And then immediately it shows up here. Now I start my day or I, I'm kind of feeling overwhelmed halfway through the day. So let me go ahead and twirl this open again. And I'm looking at the efforts I've turned on and I just, I'm like, okay, Nick, I really want to do this podcast thing. I've been kind of focused on it on and off throughout time. I've gathered results. What should I call it? Everything. But at the end of the day, now's not the right time. So I can either keep it here and feel guilty that I'm not doing anything on it, or I can recognize I have, you know, it is a low rank and let's just go ahead and put it where it needs to go. So I'm just going to go quickly to the turned on efforts in the folders and just drag and drop it back to simmering. Wow, okay, I'm feeling a lot better now. I don't have to worry about that. It's out of the efforts I've turned on. I don't have to see it on a daily basis, but I can still allow it to kind of simmer in the background and I might learn from somebody else out there and be like, oh, I could use that for my podcast when it's time to turn it back on. But that's okay, it's just simmering for now. Now there's only so much that we can cover in efforts. I mean, this is a huge thing, but I also want to give you a practical system that works right out of the box. So hopefully you can see right away how you can use efforts based on intensities. And for additional help, I've given you a bunch of examples, and these are really my personal examples. I've certainly cleaned them up, but it gives you a way to play around on your own time. So you can see the stuff that I have that's ongoing here, like taxes, that's not going away. It's only a rank one right now, but there are seasons where this all of a sudden gets ranked up to five. 
but I know it's kind of always there. Same with uh, the next version of flight school. So you'll notice that a couple of these ongoing efforts will spin out smaller efforts. You might think of them as projects that get turned on. I have three examples of this for you in Ideaverse for Obsidian. First, the Ideaverse launch is a very targeted project, if you will, that's turned on, but it's part of an ongoing effort. And then the same thing with the light workshops. Now, I see that it's only ranked three, and basically, I know it is now a five, so boom. I can recognize that it's taken up more of my ongoing bandwidth, and I also know clear deliverables with this new effort that's turned on, also at a five. So this is helping me really have a truer estimation of my bandwidth, and I can adjust accordingly. And last, we have Flight School, the next version of Obsidian Flight School, and both it's ongoing and then the next version of it is right here and if i'm being truthful it's a two because i know it needs to be but really it's a one because it's out of season and i'll get to it soon enough i might even have to put it in simmering just because these two are so intense right now so if i were to want to do that i could just go over to the folders and quickly throw it into simmering honestly i feel pretty good about that now all i really need to do is focus on these two things. And you're seeing me focus on the kit launch, Ideaverse for Obsidian, as we speak by recording this video for you. Pretty cool, right? Those are efforts in action based on the four intensities. Did you take anything out of this? The last thing I really want to drive home is that efforts, especially simmering and sleeping over here, are great guilt and stress reducers. I am telling you, once you feel the relief of moving an effort from on to simmering, you'll know what I'm talking about. Instant drop in stress, instant removal of unnecessary guilt. That's the hands-on and practical part of this lesson, but now it's time to jump into the why and where GTD, getting things done, fails and where efforts succeed. Okay, let's come back to the elephant in the room. Why efforts instead of projects? I mean, what's so wrong with projects, Nick? There's nothing wrong with projects except our over-reliance on them. Now, to keep the focus on this lesson, I'm going to keep this as a brief dive and not a deep one. That'll be for another time, but I also can't help myself. So feel free to fast forward if you don't want to know where and why GTD fails and why efforts succeed. So GTD or getting things done, or even more broadly, project-based productivity, it fails when the steps are not clear or when the steps are changing too rapidly. Keep this in mind, steps not clear or steps changing too rapidly. Sure, you can try to outline a full novel, you can have it all figured out, but when you write the first words of the first chapter and suddenly your character does something different, everything downstream is thrown into chaos. Like Mike Tyson famously replied about how his opponent had a plan, Everybody has plans until they get hit. Let's just put it this way. Projects are good when the steps are clear. Efforts are good even if they are not. An efforts mindset allows you to flow with the punches that life throws at you. What we are doing with projects in this project-based productivity world, top downing them to death, suffocating their ability to evolve, it's harming our ability to extract value from our ideas. Now, you might notice if you've been an astute listener that folders and projects seem to kind of go hand in hand and efforts and links seem to go hand in hand. Now, folders and projects are naturally top down, whereas efforts and links are naturally bottom up. So we have order, we have chaos, we have architects, we have gardeners. Guess what? We need both. But a project mindset is like that needy person needing to know all the steps before being able to take action. And even then, once they get hit, they freeze. The thing is, life doesn't work step by linear step. We often have to work with limited information and only by moving forward do things emerge. That's why efforts work. They allow the structure as needed, but they don't suffocate the energy needed to adapt as the situation changes. Okay, that's enough for now. Let me know what you think about all this effort stuff, but now it's time to wrap this up. So we have finally seen how ACE works in the Ideaverse. One more thing on efforts. Over here, what's the secret? We are taking this condition of intensity and we're making it both visible and tangible. For as much complexity as there can be in PKM, 
personal knowledge management. Managing efforts by intensity can give you immediate clarity, calm, and control over your efforts in life. That is wild. And now you've seen that you only need three folders at the root level to accomplish this. Additionally, you've at least seen the basics of how you can customize each folder to meet your own unique needs. And now you've seen how ACE works in the ultimate dashboard for your ideas that we call a home note. Now ACE is meant to be universal. Everyone can start with ACE, but everyone won't use it the same way. We're all unique people with unique careers, with unique hobbies. It takes more than a fancy acronym to figure it all out. And if you're serious about wanting to customize your personal knowledge management system, your Ideaverse, join the thousands of us who have taken our knowledge work to another level in the Linking Your Thinking workshop. Check out the workshop link in the description below. For now, you've seen how you can enter the Atlas and launch yourself into knowledge and ideas. You've seen how you can enter the calendar to time travel to the past, to capture sparks or to recenter yourself in the present and to plan and prioritize your future. And today you've seen how you can enter efforts to see all the stuff you're wanting to do and how that can allow you to effectively reprioritize all that stuff at a glance. So you can reduce any guilt that you might feel about not accomplishing everything and to feel confident that you have control over your intentions and therefore your actions. ACE stands for Atlas Calendar Efforts and it gives us three contexts to move between knowledge, time, action. Now it's up to you to see if it can work for you and fulfill its promise. And the promise of ACE is to provide a reliable and unified system for orienting your mind. With ACE and efforts out of the way, I can't wait to finally talk about links some more. In the next lesson, we'll cover the how and why of linking your thinking. So when you're ready, click here to jump to the next lesson and we'll see you there.